Hey everybody, been a while since I've uh, posted a video uh, on YouTube and of course I usually post these videos to post instruments on talkbass.com uh, so I'm known as baseballs27 on talkbass.com I have quite the following on there I've bought and sold instruments for a very long time I'm way up in the Great White North in Canada uh, in the province called Ontario, for those that don't know Canada that well. Anyway, um, I have today with me a Federa Monarch Deluxe Four String. Um, really nice instrument. Uh, I believe it's actually 22 fret, so not the typical 24. Top is curly walnut, which is a relatively standard top. Nice upgrade is wood covered uh, pickups. Very nice. Uh, previous owner decided that he didn't like gold and updated. Actually, this was the original owner did this. Um, changed the hardware to chrome. So you got chrome uh, bridge and tuners. Plus, he threw on a drop D tuner. And the guy was really kind of nice. Uh, kind enough to get a hold of me and actually sent me the original tuner. Ain't that amazing how the internet works today? What a nice gentleman. And he's the original owner of this base. Designed for him. Fretboard is Indian Rosewood. East Indian Rosewood. Uh, as if some of you guys know, that's one of the warmest rose, uh, sorry, one of the warmest fretboards um, you can actually get today. It's somewhat warmer than Brazilian. Brazilian has a different kind of zing. This is a little bit more on the darker end. Body wood is actually alder, which you can't see because as a nice added bonus, you've got a curly walnut back. So the history on this instrument, per the original owner, and I have no problem disclosing it because I like to be straight up. Um, apparently when this was on a gig, wind blew this base and knocked it off its stand. A little bit of damage was sustained. They went back to Federa, and that's how it ended up with a back. It didn't come originally with this back. And I have a feeling the gentleman's base insurance took care of a lot of it. So very good. There's no issues with this instrument. There's some minor um, uh, acrylic that's kind of lifted off the area here, but you can't even see it from anywhere close in the video. But I like to be straight up with anything. I've got photos in my ad on Talkbase that show a little bit more. But reality is there's nothing going on with this instrument that would cause it from not performing properly. Truss rod works, action's nice and low. It just, it plays like a Federa, which is probably one of the best instruments you can buy on the planet. Amazing fretwork. Those guys in Brooklyn do amazing stuff. Anyway, so today I have it plugged in to my Summit Audio um, 200. I'm trying to remember the even. It's 200 TPA 200B. So it's a two channel mic to preamp, and I'm going directly into a RME interface. And this is going directly into Logic Pro. So, and I've not, I have no filters on whatsoever. So this is basically straight in and what you get. I've got a couple of studio monitors and this room's actually treated. So you got pretty good results. The only thing you've got happening here is the uh, fact that I'm recording this with an iPhone. So that has its own limitations as well. I'm trying to get a good feel for the actual sound. So, it doesn't sound bad. Settings right now. I have it on passive mode. I've got it in single coil mode. The mid switch, I believe, is towards me. Um, I think, I believe it's 400 or 800. So, it's not even engaged with it being in passive mode. So, that means these uh, knobs are literally doing nothing with the preamp off. 
Um, I've got the volume at 100%. The concentric tone is dialed about 50% or so because I don't like the harshness necessarily all the time. Um, sometimes I crank it because it's kind of nice. I've got the pickups balanced right now, so they're set right in the middle, so you get them both. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> This is a dovetail mix joint. That's what a deluxe is. So it's there's no bolts, nothing. Um, so with with that being said, there's always a little tiny bit of attenuation. Bolt-ons add a lot more uh, harmonics. This adds more sustain, and it had kind of the best of both worlds between their neck through elite model and a bolt-on. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of both because you've got the direct separation where you've got an actual you've got the neck extending basically sitting right on top of the body and the it's really just a, a fused glue joint so really cool it's not like it extends down like their neck through model and there's two wings so the connection is literally there deluxe very cool um it's also deluxe models typically what victor wooten played and it's his, his signature model. So you look at the price of a uh, Yin Yang Deluxe, which has the fancy holly and ebony Yin Yang top, very high cost. Um, so this is the same instrument. It's just not as, you know, not as fancy woodwork going into it. So a lot less money. Anyway, um, four strings. I generally like to play five. This one, it's uh, it's nice because it's more comfortable. So for me, I'm I'm uh, I'm happy with it. It's it's a cool instrument to experience. I always like experience instruments. People will, I think often ask me, how come I don't keep anything? What's my favorite instrument? Why am I not just like hoarding everything I own? I just don't do that. I pass it on. I don't have time. I, I'm not a recording artist. Um, I just do this for fun. I'm not an artist by any means. My playing has gotten better over the years because I've gotten experience trying instruments like this. Um, but the one thing uh, is I don't have time to put a lot of time into it, unfortunately, right now. Life is changing a lot for me, and it's for the better. Um, but still, I plan to actually get better. I just need to put the time in and get better at playing. My next thing is to prove my improve my playing technique is not that good. And a lot of people complain about how I place my fingers. And that's fine. I can admit I'm human. I'm not the best. This might be a, an amazing instrument, but just like the fanciest golf clubs in the world. You know, you gotta learn to play them, play with them. So it's inspiring for me to get better at playing. Anyways, guys, enough about me. More. So let's turn that back pickup on. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
this is both balance with tone literally off. strings on this bass as well. I believe it's the Swing Bass 66. Uh, they're the light gauge, which I'm kind of nice. The other thing about this bass, it's 33 inch scale. So a little more compact and easier to play also means the string tension is a little lighter than your standard 34. Nice! It's... Remember, Rickenbacker is 3.25. So for those that have experienced that, is it really a gigantic difference? No. But I understand people are used to the muscle memory and they're used to a 34 inch scale, how that works. 32 is a lot of fun. I've played 30, 28, messed around with all scales really. I've even played 36 and uh, they all have their challenges and just getting used to it. But you stay away from the numbers and just have fun and enjoy the instrument. That's like 90% of the battle anyway, so. <laughs> Thanks very much for uh, watching. I hope it was very informative.